Father, we just we thank you for tonight. We thank you that you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yeshua, and you are the all-powerful one, and I just praise you tonight as we study this Torah portion, that you give us revelation, that you give us the direction that we need, Lord, in our lives so that we can apply this, Lord, to our situations, and we can have victory in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Give me one second to try to get this uh, going, and I think we're going to Awesome. Hopefully you're good. All right. So okay. we are in the Torah portion Beshalak, mm -hmm. um, about when Pharaoh sends um, Israel out of Egypt. And we're going to continue that story. Um, there's a lot here. Yes. We're definitely um, going to take it a little slow tonight. We won't get through. Okay. Uh, we'll highlight the Torah portion. But we're not going to get in detail. Okay. And we could spend probably months and months on this Torah portion. I know. Yeah. Um, so follow along the notes. We'll look at some of the highlights and we might okay. make some comments. I'll have Pastor Lisa read that. And okay. then we're going to dig out some things that, that we saw that was, was interesting. Yeah. So we know that Pharaoh sent Israel from Egypt and God routed Israel. So not to go to the Philistine territory and have an immediate war. And Israel goes back to Egypt. He did not take them the way that was near. So basically, so you understand this. It's not they went back to Egypt. They went back toward Egypt. Towards Egypt, And yeah. um, they're going back before these border gods, Baal, yes. Saphon. So it's very interesting. It's like why they left and now they're turning around. So it's it's uh, really interesting. And that's when Pharaoh comes. Comes, yes. You know, when he thinks he's got them trapped and the border gods have got them in confusion. It's not yeah. true at all. Right. Um, but that's the way it looks. Okay, Moses takes the bones of Joseph in fulfillment to the promise, and God leads Israel by a fiery pillar at night and a pillar of cloud by day, so they could travel by day or night. And I think that's kind of interesting because mm -hmm. we need to move whenever the cloud moves. Yes. It could be night. It could be yeah. day. Mm -hmm. um, and not just physical night or, or physical day. Yeah. It could be a spiritual dark time. Yeah. But we need to still move. When God says move. And I Amen. think that's really interesting. And that's how they said they journeyed. They were journeying sometimes during the day. Then they journey right. a little bit at night. It wouldn't go very far, obviously, because there are you right. know, millions of people. It takes a while to journey. Israel turns back at God's command and camps before the gods at the border of Egypt. Pharaoh in Egypt's heart is turned into remorse for letting Israel go. So he gets his finest 600 chariots and personally leads them to bring Israel back. He catches them at the border in front of his gods, Baal Zephon, and Israel sees and is afraid and tells Moses, this is why we did not want to leave the service of the Egyptians. And just remember that a couple of weeks ago, we talked about mm -hmm. how Pharaoh would not let Israel go except with a strong hand, with a strong hand. Right. And then, and that's how it is when we come out of spiritually, when we come out mm -hmm. of the dark place before we're born again, Right. we get free. But the enemy right. is still after us. Of and course. that's because Pharaoh is like this picture of, okay, you you left, but now I want you back. Right. And so if you've ever struggled with that, I, I know I'm saved. I know I'm redeemed. But why do I feel this pull back? Right. There's because the enemy wants you. Yes, exactly. Okay. So, and, and so let's keep moving. So look, look, we're going to look at a little scripture about that. Exodus 14, 13. Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of Adonai, which he will perform for you today. You have seen the Egyptians today, but you will never see them again, ever. Adonai will fight for you while you hold your peace. So I love that. It's like, okay, yes. God's telling him, I know it looks like you should be afraid. Mm -hmm. Don't be, don't be in fear. Stand still and see God's salvation. Yeah. And I, well, yeah, I and know. hold your peace because, I, you know, a lot of times when we're afraid, that's when we don't hold our peace. That's when we have a tendency to let our mouth fly. And the more our mouth speaks negativity, it just makes the fear expand. So we have to, we have to learn to, in that time when actually we are afraid yeah. to stand still and trust the Lord, but also watch what comes out of our mouth. Because that's you know, very years, important. Years ago, I don't know if you remember, there was a song, God is fighting for us. Yes. Pushing back the darkness. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I think we need to, this is, this is where that song really yes, came from. Yes. God is going to fight for you. Yes. And you need to remember if you're watching tonight, if you're going yeah. through anything mm. in your life, which of course, you know, it's life. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be things right. you go through. But remember, God yeah. is going to fight for fight you. Fight for you. Oh, Amen. I love it. I Amen. love it. I love it. God, okay, God told Moses to stress, stretch his rod to the sea and divide it. After Moses divided the sea, the Egyptians followed after Israel, but the Lord fights and takes the chariot wheels off. And after Israel has crossed over, Moses causes the sea to return and drown the Egyptian army completely. So uh, God mm. does fight. Yes. Um, it, the Everything that Egypt thought was going to happen in Israel actually happened to them, yeah, which the is reverse. really God's playbook. God wants to right. do a divine reversal. Yes. And the enemy is going to be caught in his own snare. Yeah. And that happened to Pharaoh. Um, and and not only Pharaoh, it happened to his choices. Yes. You choices, know, his choices, men, yes. men and chariots. Exodus 14, 28, the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen in the entire army of Pharaoh that went after them into the sea. Not one of them remained, but then Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea and the waters were like walls to them on their right hand and on their left. So Adonai saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. When Israel saw the great work that Adonai did over the Egyptians, the people feared Adonai and they believed in Adonai and his servant Moses. Yeah, and I really like mm. this because I think this is interesting because they had seen 10 plagues. You could argue this is the 11th miracle. I mean, right. I don't know, but they don't really believe in God and Moses. Right, right. I mean, it's really, it's a work for Emunah here. Yeah. They had faith. They had when faith. When they saw, you know, basically in the Hebrew, it says, it's not the Egyptians. Egypt is dead. Yes. So we need to remember Egypt is dead. The Amen. darkness is dead. Amen. And Amen. we need to have faith in God who brought us out. And then, you know, God, and Sir Moses is a type of, of savior. He's a type of Yeshua. You know, right. he's, a, he's a deliverer. We need to have faith in Yeshua. So after the great victory of the Reed Sea, Israel sings a song to the Lord. Then Miriam responds with a special song with the women, with the tambourines and the timbrels. And after three <coughs> days, Israel is out of water and they are thirsty and begin to complain. They arrive at Mara and find bitter water. So Moses throws a tree in the water and it becomes sweet in the Israel, Israelites drink. And, and this is really a prophecy of Israel. Yes, yes. Because life makes us bitter. Egypt yeah. made Israel bitter. Right. They ran out of water after three days. Really interesting. The right. number three, number for resurrection, the mm -hmm. number for fruitfulness, um, the number of, that was dark mm -hmm. in Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, but after three days, um, they're thirsty. And what happens? Instead of praying, I want you to see this. They don't pray. Mm -mm. They don't talk to God. They just complain. Right. And I was like, wow, it could we sometimes... Like you said, we've got to watch our, our mouth, our mouth mm -hmm. because when we don't have the water we want, or if life right. is bitter instead right. of better, right. we need to do not, this is the example of what not to do. That's exactly. why it's written for us. Yeah. Don't complain because the cross. That's right. The tree. The yeah. bitter cross, because the sages actually say, and every commentary says the same thing. The tree that Moses actually picked was a bitter tree. Mm -hmm. And it was to show them even a greater miracle that God can use the bitter tree, the cursed tree. And through okay. the curse, yeah. life is made sweet. Yeah, life is Through made what sweet. Yeshua did, he took the curse. Right. He took the bitterness, right? And, and so, and then the mm -hmm. waters become sweet. And wow, isn't that just like a great metaphor for our life when Yeshua yeah. is in our life? Yes. Our life becomes sweet. Our life becomes sweet. And you sweet. think about Everything of what God's telling Israel, he said, I'm leading to a land of what? Milk and honey, yes. a, a sweet land. Yes. You know, his yes. word is sweet. His ways are sweet. Yes. God promises to be Israel's healer if they will follow his voice, ordinances, and decrees. We'll look at this more on Shabbat. Yeah. But this was do we have a promise of healing? Yes. Do we have a promise that God said, what I did to Egypt, I don't want to ever yeah. put on my right. people? Right. Yes. Yes. But it's conditional. Right. It's conditional and it's garden language because it says, mm. if you will hear my voice. Yeah. So when they were in the garden, they didn't obey, obey the, the voice. voice. Yes. Yes. And, uh, and they didn't mm. obey his ordinances, his decrees. Right. That God had told them, don't eat this tree, you know, mm. uh, but the serpent was there. They saw rather than 
heard. Yeah. You know what I mean? So anyway, it's a, it's that amazing. Yeah. We'll, we'll dig into it more, okay. but he is our healer. He, he is, is good. Hey, Bob, Hey, um, Rafa, our healer, and we can claim it, mm. but it's conditional. You know, he said, I'm the God that heals thee, mm-hmm. but it's conditional on, are we going to hear his voice? Are we going to hear Because his voice? if we don't, Hallelujah. that could open the door yeah. to maladies, yes. to yes. infirmities. And so, it, so anyway, I, I just love what Yeshua is willing to do for us. Even when we, when those infirmities come, he's still, the healer. Like, we'll repent yeah. the, because sometimes we open the door, not all the time, but right. a lot of times. Okay. So they come to Elam and camp by 70 palm trees and 12 pools of water. On the 15th of the second month, the people began to murmur and complain, asking for meat and bread. So when you see 70 palm trees and 12 pools of water, what Mm. What does that make you think of? Does it make you think of the 12 disciples, disciples and the 70? Yes. Oh, that and followed? the 70 that followed. Yes. Okay. Yes. It should. Oh, that's it can also make you think of the 12 tribes and the 70 elders. There's, yeah. Remember when mm-hmm. Moses is going to transfer leadership, God puts his spirit on mm-hmm. the 70. Um, and we know that, of course, 12 is the number of God's government, the 12 tribes, the 12 apostles. Mm. So, okay. So now you have one month after they leave Egypt. Right. Remember in the scriptures, there's also God gives a provision for on the second month, on the 15th day of the month, yeah. uh, or the 14th day of the month, the day that you would normally celebrate Passover. Right. You, you can, can you can get a you can have a do-over. Right. Because if you missed it, you were traveling, mm-hmm. um, or you weren't you were in an unclean state. And it's interesting how, okay, it's a second Passover, really. It's the first time mm-hmm. there is a second Passover. It's not initiated yet, but it is a second Passover. And mm-hmm. the people are asking for meat and bread. And the, you know that the month is ER, and that is the time of the um, barley harvest. The barley harvest. So when you, when we get into Israel, we're going to see that that's when the harvest time. So I thought it was very interesting as I was reading this that they were asking for bread. Yeah, they're asking for barley. Yeah, could be barley. Yeah, yeah. Could be the the you know whatever meat they were asking for. Obviously, right. we're going to see that they are going to get they're going to get meat and mm-hmm. they're going to get bread. It's not going to be what they think. No, no, um, it's heavenly. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's just really interesting how they go first. They co- once you see, once you start complaining, mm, yeah, it opens the door to more complaining. Yes, and it's yes. harder to tame your tongue. It's yeah. harder to stop it mm-hmm. um, because it becomes like my go-to. You know, I just yeah. and, and even uh, hilariously, I'm saying I'm only gonna say this because I am Jewish. <laughs> Jewish people are known for you know fiddle on the roof. God, did you have to pick us as the chosen people? <laughs> do we have to go through all this stuff. So, um, but it's really not God's way. Mm-mm. God's way is not complaining. God's way is to pray, pray, to go to an altar. Mm-hmm. Okay. So God promises to rain bread from heaven and it comes in the morning and is under the dew. So there's something I saw mm-hmm. and I didn't write this down. I just want to show you the saints. And I wrote this down privately and I was meditating on mm-hmm. and reading and studying for days on this Torah portion. And it actually tells us that at night, first the quail came. Yeah. And that's when they got their meat. And the word for meat in Hebrew is basar, and it can mean flesh, but it's also the same word for the gospel. Mm. So they get the gospel first at night. At night. And then they get their manna during the day, and the manna shows them how to live the gospel. Right. You get the grace comes first. First, yeah. The meat comes first. The gospel comes first. And then you learn how to live. By the word yeah and I just thought that oh was i've got another analogy all right, all right. you you get the word and then you get the blessing because you can only be blessed through his word same thing the bread hallelujah that's yeah, awesome yeah you get the blessing cool cool god right. gives people three laws concerning the manna gather an omer don't try to keep it overnight don't try to gather on shabbat and on the sixth day double manna would come and it would be the only manna that would last the two days so hmm. And there's other things about the manna that will you can learn if you study the scripture mm. about. And I thought it was very interesting. It's like you go to Israel. I don't. I, I hope some of you can go with us. You know, in a in a smaller way. Right. Um, but even when you do get to go, you'll notice on Shabbat you go to a restaurant and you might say, "Oh my goodness, on Shabbat the food is not fresh." Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is they cook it before Shabbat yeah, and before. then they put it on warmers. Yes. Because yes. in the scripture. If you read our text, mm-hmm. our Torah portion says, bake what you're going to bake. Right. 
right. keep uh, Disney. He's talking about Shabbat. And then he says, okay, and and don't, because he says, God's going to give you double. Right. Because you're not really supposed to be cooking fresh food. Right. On Shabbat. And they say, yeah. why does an Israeli person, why, why do Jewish people don't, why don't they cook on Shabbat? It's, it's actually in the because scripture. of the script. Yeah. It's actually yeah. Scripture. So mm -hmm. they would gather an Omer. If they kept it overnight, the Bible says it bred worms. Yeah. Worms has to do with death. Yeah. It has to do with decay. Yeah. Really interesting stuff. We can, it, it's the Tola worm. Um, it's really interesting. And then he says, don't try to gather at Shabbat. What happened what, in our Torah portion? What did they actually do? They test they, it, right? They, they go out. Yeah, they tried and there was nothing there. There's nothing there. And it's mm -hmm. like, is that telling us, okay, we should really do our best not to work on Shabbat? Yes, yes. Because yes. really the blessing's not on It's it. not there when you try you to know? work. Yeah, it's not. It's just, really, okay. And then on the sixth day, God would give them a double. Yeah. And it would be the only manna that would last. The other ones, if you kept it overnight, it would not be good. Right. Because but God it's... wants us to live in, by daily bread. Yeah. And that yeah. was Yeshua's prayer. Mm -hmm. God give us, this, it's a, the first daily. reference to daily bread is the manna. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. heavenly bread. Okay. We'll, so, we'll move on. But I'm not going to dig any more on that because I'm really going to teach deep on, okay. on depth because there's a lot of revelation in the manna. Okay. Okay. So in Rephidim, the people quarreled again because of thirst. God told Moses about a special rock in Horeb, and he should strike it in front of the elders. The place was called Massa and Meribah because of the strife and the contention there. So I want to show you something that I want you to think about. Mm. There's a, there, again, they're thirsty. Now they're yeah. quarreling. Right. So remember, they're complaining. complaining then to quarrel. oh, they're yeah. quarreling. Mm -hmm. And God says, okay, I want you to go to Horeb, which is the place of Sinai. Right. I want, there's mm -hmm. a special rock there. We don't know. But obviously Hebrews tell us the rock is, is Messiah. Messiah. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. And it's going to give you living water, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to last for 40 years. Right. Um, it's going to follow them according to tradition and according to the writer of Hebrews. Yeah. Um, but God gives them instruction. And we have to remember, just because God gives you an instruction one time on how to do something, right. if you get into this situation again, you can't automatically think I should do right. what I did the first time, because later we're going to see that God's going to tell Moses, okay, Miriam died, the water, you know, they couldn't find the rock, whatever, mm. go and speak to the rock. But Moses goes back to the first time to the strike. And we have to remember, yeah. and I know this is prophetic because yeah. it's about Messiah. You know, Messiah can't be, you know, be struck twice. Right. He's going to suffer once right. for us. Right. But it's still, we need to start thinking. It's like, just because God did it one way, yeah. just because he right. showed you one way, this is how you handle it. You need to get a fresh manna. Yeah. Yeah. Fresh word. Amen. So, because, okay. So now do you, is there anything else do you want to say about that? No, I just, I think that, that that's key what you're saying, because we have that tendency to go back, but just like you said earlier, that God gives us that fresh, he gave them fresh manna daily. He wants to give us fresh instructions yes. Yes. when, and that's why we have the Holy spirit. The Holy spirit is our comforter. He's our friend. He's our teacher. So when we don't know what to do, and we find ourselves in a situation of fear or complaining or quarreling. We need to stop. And like you said earlier, we need to pray. And we need to get the, what the old timers called the mind of the Lord. And what that is, is we need a word from the Holy Spirit and instruction. And he's going to instruct us every time. Yeah. And then this is actually going to begin the quarreling against leadership. Mm, yeah. This is going to be the seeds that come to roost later yeah. that mm -hmm. are going to be really bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Immediately after the internal strife, an external enemy came named Amalek, who was unprovoked and killed and began to kill the ones on the outside of the camp. God gave Moses a strategy to defeat them. So we were with Andre. Andre mm -hmm. was ministering uh, at our congregation on Shabbat, and he was sharing with us privately. I don't remember if he shared it publicly or not, but he said, I knew when there was internal strife in the nation, yeah, war was coming. Yeah. And this is a playbook. This That's is what right happened. out of the Torah portion. The, okay, they complain. Now they're quarreling. Yeah. And right after that, an attack. So if you ever thought, it's like, why is the enemy coming now? We need to go back to 
what was, was my I, attitude? Yes. What was, yes, I, was yes. I have a, did I have a fighting spirit? Was I quarreling? Yes. Cause it's the little foxes yeah. that, you know, that spoiled vine. It's a little th- doors yeah. that the enemy, mm-hmm. you know, does, he uses. He uses. And yeah. Amalek, you know, is one of the, the understandings of Amalek is, is to cool you down. He was cooling down their fire even more. Right. Right. Mm. This is more to, to I'm like, we'll look at it another time, but okay, go ahead. So baby. Joshua would lead and fight the battle in the valley while Moses would stand with his staff and his hands raised to Adonai in prayer. As long as Moses kept this position, Joshua was winning the battle. When Moses got tired, Aaron and Ur sat him on a stone and helped steady his hands and the battle was won. This is one of the greatest mm-hmm. pictures of the power of prayer yeah. and the power of lifting of our hands. Yes. I think yes. this is why the apostle says, lift, lift up your holy hands, hands. without yes. wrath or doubting. Yes. I think Hallelujah. the um, Aaron and her were symbolic of, they're saying, you're, don't, we're not going to operate in wrath. We're not going to operate in doubt. Yeah. And we're going to, and and when you read the Chumash about mm. the, the word, it says he, they, um, they emunated his hands. They held his hands faithful. Yeah. Or in faith, faith, in faith, they helped his hand steady yeah. in prayer. Yes. That's what the connotation is, the, the lifting of hands. And you go back to every time Moses um, would lift his hands yeah. in obedience to a word from God. Yeah. And God would say, lift your hands, lift your rod. Yes. It's a posture yes. of power. Yes. And of Amen. course, humility, Amen. dependence on God. You're sitting on the stone. Who's the stone? Yeah. The you Lord, know, yeah. you're resting on him. And as you're resting on him and you're, and that, is that not the prayer of agreement? Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're family. If you didn't know that Aaron and her are all family of, yeah. of, of Moses. So it's like, we, we need our family. You need your spiritual family. You need your congregational family. Yeah. We need to we need to find the people who have our like kind and like yeah. mind that we can pray with. Yes. Who Amen. can hold up our hands. Amen. Amen. Because that is the posture. Yeah. They actually say, you look at that posture, but I was told, this is the posture. This is a cross. Yeah. It's literally a cross. Yeah, because he's holding it. The way hand. he was holding his hands. Yeah. It's a it's a cross. Yeah. I mean, is it is not what Yeshua is doing on the cross? Is that not the greatest act of intercession? Yes. Yes. And he won the battle. Yeah. So I think yeah. it's sin so, and death. Hallelujah. It's just powerful. The grave. Powerful Hallelujah. stuff. Okay. Exodus 14. So Joshua overpowered the Amalekites in his army with the edge of the sword. Adonai said to Moses, write this for a memorial in the book and rehearse it in the hearing of Joshua. For I will utterly blot out the memory of the Amalekites from under heaven. Then Moses built an altar and called the name of it Adonai Nisi. Then he said, by the hand upon the throne of Adonai, Adonai will, Adonai will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So once the battle is won, mm. what does Moses do? He builds an altar yes. and he says, God is my miracle. Yeah, God is my, my banner. banner. You know, I think yes. that's amazing. And then he's he's letting you know from the scripture. It's mm. not actually, if you read some English text, they actually take out the whole verse 16. It's not yeah. even there. Yeah. It is there in the Hebrew. Right. They don't understand it. But Amalek is a picture of, of Satan mm-hmm. who wants right. to put his hand on the throne right. of God. Right. Because remember Satan says in Isaiah, I, and yeah. I think it says, I will ascend. I will, I will be like the most high. Right. He's putting his hand on the throne. Yes. Um, then you think it was like, wow, if he's attacking God's people, he's putting his hands on the throne. That's right. But it's real because we're seated in heaven heavenly places, places. Right? Amen. So anyway, That's so good. but it shows you about this eternal war. You want to know where the Nazis come from. They can trace it back to Amalek. Yeah. Where did Haman come from? Trace it back, back to, Amalek. to Amalek. It's an yeah. eternal war yeah. where the beast and Antichrist is probably gonna come. Yeah. Same, same yeah, thing. Yeah, it is. So let's look at more in depth. Moses takes the bones of Joseph, mm-hmm. as was promised. This is a very Every time I think of it, I don't want to cry because I'm first realizing in my whole life how important it is to honor the dead. Yeah. Honor those who've gone before us. I yeah. know it. I I know about it. I've read about it. I've yeah. tried to do it, but I, I don't think now that I have a more understanding in the Hebrew mindset, taking yeah. care of those who can't take care of themselves. Yeah. Not just the widow, stranger, orphan, the poor, but the dead yeah. Yeah. is probably the, the most important. And it's believed that's why Abraham is actually chosen. Yeah. How he took to care, care of his brother yeah. who died, his yeah. kids, Lot, yeah. and he married Sarah, which is believed yeah. to be. And uh, even his, how he took care yeah. of his wife, Sarah, when he buried yeah. her. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Exodus 13. Moses also took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had made Israel swear an oath saying, 
God will surely remember you. And then you are to carry my bones away with you. So it's so important mm. for Moses. Okay. Joseph dies. Of course, mm. we know then that generation, you know, the generation is gone. Pharaoh forgets, you know, what Joseph did. But God made a promise through Joseph that God is going to remember, remember. We'll show, look at it in the Hebrew. And it's not, he doesn't delegate this task. The right. great thing about the greatest leader. Mm. And if Moses is a type of Yeshua, right. a type of savior, Messiah figure, he cares about Joseph's bones. Yes. What yes. does that mean? Yeah. The house of Joseph, the house, house of, of Israel. Israel. Yeah. It's bones. Yes. Okay. So, okay. I gave you, I just blocked. I kind of like yeah. showed you some of the, the, the bones are twice, uh, mm. sworn, sworn is twice, um, uh, visit, visit is surely and visit is, yeah. it's a double in the Hebrew. I, I hope I broke it up. So bones are mentioned twice. Sworn is mentioned mm -hmm. twice as a double. Visit is mentioned twice as a double and carry up is mentioned twice. Yeah. So there's something prophetic. Remember, every time you see a double in the Hebrew, yeah. it's not by, it's not it's something legal. It's mm. something prophetic. It's prophecy. Um, it can have something to do with now and in the future, which, okay. So Joseph, go ahead and read that. Oh, Joseph did not want to be permanently buried in Egypt. He will be buried by Joshua after 40 years of being in the wilderness, traveling with the children of Israel until they possess the land. Wow. They're carrying his bones yes, yes. out of Egypt. And now yes, they're yes. carrying it. They say that it was another box next to the ark, but that they're carrying Joseph's bones until they can cross over into the promised land. 40 years. This is this Amazing. is some kind of prophecy here. Joshua 24, Joseph's bones, which Israel had brought up from Egypt, they buried in Shechem in the parcel of ground that Jacob had bought from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of silver. It became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. So he's buried in Shechem, the place of the shoulder. Could mm -hmm. be government. Right. Government rests on his shoulder. Okay. Um, so the word for swear, mm. it means to be complete. So it, I, yeah, um, Joseph made them swear, swear, make an oath of to seven oneself. Mm. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. To swear as if repeating a declaration seven, seven times. times. Think about the seven feasts. Everything is seven. It's like, it's perpetual. It's like, mm -hmm. okay. The first mention of the swearing is to Amalek, king of Gerar, and the captain of Picol of the Philistines. This is the first mention of that word swear. Now, therefore, swear unto me here by God that thou wilt not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son. But according to the kindness that I have done unto thee, thou shalt do unto me and to the land wherein thou hast sojourned. And Abraham said, I will swear. So two times is mentioned here as well. Yeah. And the context is when you swear, you don't do falsely. Right. And you do kindness. Right. And think that that's exactly what's happening yeah, with, with Joseph. Joseph's bones. Yeah. Mm. The first mention of swearing is to tell the truth, not dealing falsehood, but in kindness. The okay. greatest kindness is shown when we honor people who have died. Okay, we'll just we will, we'll keep moving on from that. Okay, Joseph, go ahead. Joseph had made Israel make an oath, an oath to not deal falsely with his bones. And when God fulfills the truth of the original promise to Abram and confirmed by Joseph before he dies, Moses understands how important he <coughs> does not delegate this to anyone. He personally sees to this oath, oath. Mm. Okay. So remember, mm. what jo uh, Joseph said, God's going to surely visit you, but it's really not surely visit. It's a God's going to visit, visit you. It's a word for God. He's going to visit to, he's going to tend to, he's going to mm. muster, muster, he's going to mm. number, number, which is, you know, reckon, reckon, yeah. visit, visit, punish, punish, a point, point, look after, look after, care for, care for. Yeah. You can see all the different ways that word is mentioned, mm. but it, it's so pro prophetic because we have to remember what God said he will do. It yes. might take a long time. Yeah. It might take hundreds of, for Abraham. It was over 400 years. Yeah. yeah. He's not even, he's not even right. on this earth. He's alive, but he's not right, on this earth. Right, right. But God, there's things that God is going to do after we're gone. That's right. To fulfill his word to you. Yes. Because he's faithful. Mm. The first mention of this word is what God says to Sarah. 
And, Look, the, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. So the first mention shows that God's going to do what he said he's yeah, going to do. Yeah. And so when Joseph said, you guys are coming out of Egypt, yeah, it, it was an oath. Oh, it was surely, yeah. surely. It was, yeah. he's going to visit it. And you're going to carry my bones. You're going to over right. on my bones. Yeah. So, okay. So go ahead. just like the promise to Abram and Sarah was sure and true to give them a son. And they did, and they did by a miracle, God would see to it that Israel would be visited and counted and they would not miss their appointment at Sinai as they would possess the land of their ancestral promise. Now, I want you to think about the scripture in Philippians 1, 6. He who began a good work in you, yeah. what? Yeah. He'll complete, he'll complete it. it. Finish it. He's going to do it. Yeah. What God spoke, he's going to finish. It might not be on this side. Right. And it might. Yeah. You know, but he's going to do it. He's faithful. And yes. we've got to realize how faithful God yeah. is to his word. Well, that's why Paul, <laughs> the apostle Paul wrote Hebrews 11. Right. That was the whole purpose of him bringing all of the forefathers in. And he starts out with, they had a promise and they didn't see it, but they didn't let go. And the same applies to us. We know that this world is going to come to an end. We might already be yeah, with the Lord yeah, yeah, when it happens, yeah. but we know it's going to happen. Yeah. And we have to hang on and be faithful. So Genesis 50, 24 says, and Joseph said unto his brethren, I die and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land, which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. Now here's the promise. The promise isn't just that you're leaving Egypt. No. And you got to get a hold of this. The promise is not that you just right. got your forgiveness and you got out of Egypt. The mm -hmm. promise is you get your inheritance. That's right. You come into the land that God promised you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, so Joseph took, so Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel saying, God will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones from hence. Okay. This is so amazing because 24 and 25 both say a double yeah, surely, 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 surely or visit, visit. Yeah, that both of them are telling it. And then he says, yeah. and you shall carry up my bones. Yes. How is he going to know that they're going to actually do it? He had to do it. He had to know by faith. <laughs> and here Moses doesn't forget this promise because Amen. he knows he's only leaving there or he's leaving there partly because of the confirmation of what Joseph yeah, said. Yeah, exactly. Abraham, God first promised to Abram. Then he promised to yeah. Isaac. Then he promised to Jacob. And then Joseph gets a hold of him and says, Listen, yeah. I'm dying, but this promise is sure. Yeah. Oh, Amen. how I feel the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have to be sure that our God is not a liar and will not deal falsely. What God has promised to his counted children will eventually come to pass. Amen. God will surely visit us in our bones to will be carried out of this worldly Egypt. Do you see that? Yes. Carrying the bones out of Egypt is God's carrying us out of this world. Yes. Our bones are not going to be here. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. This is the resurrection story. Yes. And the promise of Joseph's bones leaving Egypt is pointing to the resurrection of the dead and the restoration of the house and bones of Joseph. Ezekiel 37 and the return of Messiah to gather his elect. So you can tie all this with Ezekiel 37 yes. where there's these dry bones Yes. They're dead and they're resurrected and yeah. they're going to come back. They're going to become yeah. a, a people again. They're going to become a, a nation again. I mean, yeah. it's a restoration of the house of Joseph. Yes. Okay. And, and, you know, and, or, or Israel, you know, because those were the 10 Northern tribes. So it's a word you'll carry my bones. Um, it's the word Allah. Allah has a resurrection context yeah. elevated to go to up ascend. the Allah, the Ola offering, the elevated offering, the yeah. resurrection offering. The lifted up offering. I, I have so much stuff there, but we, we won't have time to look at it. Okay. So the first mention of to go up mm. is about the Garden of Eden's, one of the, uh, the, the mist. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Mm. So that's the first mention of has to do. It's basically going back to Eden. Yeah. To the water, um, to the garden. So when Pharaoh pursued Israel with his choice chariots, the people were very fearful. Israel cried to the Lord, but also they told Moses, this is why we spoke to you not to take us out. And, and it's better for us just, it's better to just leave us as slaves better than dying in the wilderness. Okay, so that's an interesting statement. Have yeah. you ever felt like, yeah. come on, 
I got saved. I thought all my troubles, would be, the pastor said, you know, <laughs> hopefully he didn't say that, but you know, um, but pe sometimes you feel like, Hey, it would have just been better. It's easier. I'm always under attack and I'm, I'm fighting, you know, or um, when you take a step of faith yeah. and then all of a sudden you, the enemy comes and attacks, then you question, did I do the right thing? But you know, you have to, like we said, you cannot fear. You so, cannot. So Moses tells the people, um, he says to, to stand firm, stand, firm. stand firm. Where have we heard that before? Mm. Look in Ephesians. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist when the times are evil. And after you have done everything to stand firm, stand firm. It's a double, then. right? Two go. times, right? Okay. Yeah. So buckle the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. Strap up your feet in readiness with the good news of Shalom. Isn't it interesting? The Passover story. They gird their loins. It's yeah. with truth. They mm -hmm. put their, they have their feet shod. Yeah. It, it's just like this goes Strapping, totally yes, along with that. Yes. So Moses told the people, um, um, Yatsab. Yeah. So what does that mean? Um, it means to place anything so as to stay. Mm. To, he basically he's saying stand firm. You got to station yourself. You got to continue. You got to yeah. present yourself. You got to remain. You got to resort. You got to set. You got to stand fast, stand forth, stand still, stand up. You got to set or station yourself, or even yeah. you got to take your stand. That's what Moses yes, says. You got to take your stand. But they're afraid. Yeah, yeah. But Pharaoh's coming. Right, exactly. You know, and do you, have you ever felt like, wow, what am I supposed to do? God says, all right, stand up, stand yeah. firm. This is your time. Yeah. So, all right. So, wait, okay, take your stand. But this is the first mention of the words to stand up or to stand. It's Miriam looking over Moses when she's watching what's going to happen to him. It's oh, the same word. Exodus 2, 4. And his sister stood afar off to with what would be done, to see what would so be done. We him. have that. Okay. She's not standing in fear. She's standing in faith. And she stand, she's right? stationed. She stations her mother, herself. Her mother stationed her there. Think about it. Yes. Her mother stationed yes. her. Yes. And she was stationed yeah. for to. And do you think she was praying? Mm. You better believe it. So she, mm. so we, we, we need to start thinking like that. Okay, we got to mm. stand and know that God's going to come through. Amen. Because this is what Moses said, stand firm. You're going to what? You're going to see salvation. Patient. Hallelujah. Mary was standing in faith for her. realize how many times that is that That's is a, a an enormous amount of time is for a phrase to be used yes it's, fear it, not you know so god yes. is telling us yes stand still stand firm it, it's, it's only yes. have to work still it's more it's more like station yourself yeah. in faith yeah and don't be in fear yeah and look what look at god said in genesis 15 after these things the word of the lord came unto abram in a vision saying fear not Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. Hallelujah. Joshua 10, 25. And Joshua said unto them, fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. And that's, we learn in the story. God said, I'm yeah. going to fight for you. You're going to see this. Yes, God's going to yes. do it. Yes. Um, it doesn't mean you don't have to show up. Right. And you don't have to be in prayer and in faith, but God's going to do it. Now look at Moses response to the people. In Exodus 14, 13, and Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he showed to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see, you shall see them again, no more forever. So that's, yeah, I believe look at all our Messiah times, would yeah. tell us the same thing. He's telling us now, yeah. don't be afraid. C is mentioned three times. Mm. Fear not, and then you're going to see. You're going to see. You're going to see. You're going to see what? You're going to see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, and it's really, you're going to see the Hebrew is amazing. It's the word Yeshua. You're yeah. going to see Yeshua. Hallelujah. You're going to see Yeshua, Yod Hey Bav Hey. That's basically what it's, it's, mm. it's, it's the only two words there. You're going to see Yeshua, Yod Hey Bav Hey. You yeah. can say, I don't know. You're going to see Yeshua, um, yeah. the name. Yeshua. What are you going to see? Something saved, deliverance, yeah. aid, victory, prosperity. What are yeah, we going to see? Health. Yeah. We need to stand in faith. Yes. Amen. And he says, you're going to see, you're going to see, you're going to see. 
what are you going to say? I'm going to say the salvation. Yes. Lord. Amen. And you got to say it. Yes. You, you got to say, say it. Okay. Yes. Mm. Okay. First mention is Genesis 49, 18. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Mm. Okay. Now, this is crazy. This scripture is about the tribe of Dan. Mm. And Dan's, it's almost like a pre-prophecy of what happened in the Reed Sea. I want you to look at this. I never saw this before. This Genesis is, 49, so this 17. Is 49, 17 is before 18. 18 says, I'm waiting for your salvation. Yeah. You, oh, Lord. Same, you know, and Moses says, stand still. You're going to see. You're going to wait. You have to wait and stand at faith. You're going to see it. Well, look at what verse 17 says. And shall be a serpent, by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse's heels so that his rider shall fall backward. So what happens in yeah. the Reed Sea? Yeah. The Pharaoh gets bitten by the serpent that he is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and his riders his horses oh, fall backwards yeah. it's almost like a pre-prophecy yeah. now if you use dan's name mm -hmm. and don't so use the word dan as a name i just thought of this just here just right now what if the word dan is also the word for judgment dan is okay dan, judgment shall be a serpent by the way an adder in the path that biteth the horse's heels yeah so the judgment of pharaoh yeah is going yeah. to be yeah. He okay. So it seems like the blessing was go ahead and read it. <laughs> okay. It seems like the blessing spoken over Dan could actually point to the deliverance of what happened to the chariots in the Reed Sea. They were bit by the adder and the serpent they had trusted in, and they fell down backwards and drowned in the sea. Remember, they're standing before their border got bail. Yeah, yeah. They're putting their trust yeah. in that false serpent, right? Yes. Pharaoh's known as the 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 serpent, the the crocodile. He, yeah. he's going to, and all, he brings his choice horses. And yeah. I, I think this could possibly be like a pre prophecy. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. what happens in the song of Moses, Israel sings of Yeshua. Yeah. Exodus 15 two. the Lord is my strength and song, and he's become my salvation. He is my God and I will prepare him a habitation. My father's God and I will exalt him. So he's become, this is almost like a prophecy yeah. of the future. He's become my Yeshua. Yeshua, my salvation. I will prepare him a habitation. That's the word for sanctuary in the Hebrew. They're mm -hmm. even talking about in the song of this is, we could study this song, yeah, like for for a long time because there's so much revelation in this song, and and we don't realize the power of the song of the Lord. Yes, this is a yes. song of the Lord. And as I was reading it, I began to read it out loud. You know, and I began to also declare this over Israel right now. You know, it's so cool because. You can do that. And even in our Psalms per portion this week, declare it over Israel as you're speaking it. The Lord is, is Israel's strength. The Lord is his song yeah. and he has become their salvation. He is God. He is your Vave, and he prepares a, 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 a habitation. He's their father yeah. and we yeah. exalt him. I exalt them. So yeah, we could take this and well, Put yeah. it in our life and, and even in what's going on in the world today. I, I never had the chance to dig it all out. But if you, I, I'm reading in Hebrew and in the Hebrew, it's actually divided into like stanzas. Mm. So it's not like word for word, like the regular Torah. It actually breaks it up in, in sections. Okay. And it's just like, wow, you know, and you know, there's prophecy here. Yes. You know, there's prophecy Hallelujah. Here. Um, okay. Exodus 14, 14 and 15, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your oh, peace. There you go. And the Lord said unto Moses, wherefore criest thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. And it's almost like, okay, there's a time for prayer mm -hmm. and then there's time you got to just, you got to go forward. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Okay. So now you remember, remember you mentioned about holding your peace. Keep reading. Yeah. But lift up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Okay. So divide the sea when you lift your hand. Mm. Those waters are going to be divided. Almost goes back to the story of creation. God divides the waters. Um, and but how does it happen? With your hands lifted. Right. And in the song of Moses, it actually, uh, the song that we read in Exodus 15, it actually says that he struck it, or it didn't say it in the song. It actually says it in 
when he when um when he strikes the rock, God tells him the way you struck the sea is the way you, you strike, strike the rock. rock. So we we didn't you might not see it in the scripture yeah. that he he lifted up his hands, um, but he and he did, but he also used that rod to strike the sea. And when yeah. the rod hit the sea, the yeah. sea struck. The okay. rod is symbolic, yeah, symbolic of God's yeah. power, His authority. So. Yeah. Then, because I, I mentioned this, so God tells Moses, when it comes to getting water on the rock, take your rod and do what you did to the reed sea. Yeah. You got to strike it. And that's mm -hmm. why he knew to strike the rock. Yeah. But remember again, doesn't mean. Yeah. Okay. So Exodus 17, five and six, and Adonai said to Moses, walk before the people and take of the elders of Israel with you, along with your staff with which you struck the river, take it in your hand and go, behold, I will stand before you there upon the rock and the earth. You are to strike the rock and the water will come out of it so that the people can drink. Then Moses did just so in the eyes of the elders of Israel. So let me make a correction because yeah. it's when he struck the river. It's yeah. not when he, he didn't strike the, the sea, the river, but when he struck yeah. the river, the first plague. The front of the blood. Yeah. Right. So I want to make that correction. Nile River. So yeah. He struck the river. He didn't strike the sea. He lifted his hands, but he didn't strike it. But he did strike the river. Right. And, and God instructed him to do it again. Okay, so we know there's power in lifting up your hands. First Timothy 2 8, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubt. So the lifting of hands is a posture of reliance on God with prayer. And Moses told the people, the Lord will fight for you. You will see his salvation. Do not fear. So always associate when you, yeah. if you're lifting your hands in the congregation yeah. and worship mm -hmm. or prayer. This is really a it's a posture. It's a posture of reliance on God. Trusting and you know, God. when you're when you're in intercession and you're praying and you're doing warfare, I know I this is something that I always do when I'm doing warfare prayer. I always have my hand. I always think of how Moses had his hands up. And I think about that, you know, because also with the armor, you're lifting up the shield of faith. So you're you're in that that posture so i think it's important. and it's a lot of times in the plays moses would be lifting his hands yeah so it's really yes. it's 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 definitely something we need to look at um lord fight. will fight for you lachem he's gonna consume your enemies yeah it's it's, it's yeah. like he's gonna eat them yeah he's devour gonna devour them it. yeah yeah you, you, and you're gonna be overcome okay so egypt actually used that same word about fighting with israel mm -hmm. um they were afraid that Israel was going to turn and fight with them. Right. And they lied about Israel. Israel was not going to do that. Mm -hmm. They weren't going to join their enemies. So, but this is what it says in Exodus 1. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when they're fall, falleth out of any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. Israel personally never even fought. No, and they, they're always accused but, of this and they never yeah, do it. But God said, yeah. all right, they yeah. won't fight for themselves. I'm going to fight gonna for them. I'm going to fight for them, know? yeah. Hold your peace. What does that yes. mean? You mentioned this and I, I don't know. Yeah. So what does it mean? It's the word harash. Mm. It means it's not the word you would think it, it would be. It's to a root word means to scratch, to engrave, to be engraved or plowed. Mm -hmm. Hence from the use of tools to fabricate, to cut in you, to engrave, to plow or device. Well, what, what could this even mm. mean? Hold, you know, hold your harash. The first mention. Genesis 24, 21. And the man wondering at her held his peace to wh whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. That's so what this Rebecca, is the servant yeah. of Abraham was yeah. sent to find a wife for Isaac. Yeah. He prays. Right. And then he holds his peace. Yes. Okay. He lets, he's in great, okay. he's letting that word be engraved yes, or, or yeah. cut in him. Yeah. Um, okay. So the backstory, okay. Abraham servant went to find an ice. So here's what he prays. Genesis 14, 24. Look, I'm standing by the spring of water and the daughters of the men of the city are going out to draw water. Now let it be that the young women to whom I say, please tip your jar so that I might drink. And she will say, drink. And I'll also water your camels. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant, Isaac. So by this, I'll know that you have shown graciousness to my master. So, okay. So he held his peace. Yeah. And what does that mean? To hold he let God show or mm -hmm. show up and show off and work on behalf of Abraham and Isaac in response. So when God says, stand mm -hmm. still, 
you you already prayed. Now you're standing right. in faith. Now it's time to not. You have to let God do what He yeah. said. You have to. You watch and see. Remember, right. you, three times God said, yeah. "You're gonna see. You're gonna see. You're gonna see." Well, to be <laughs> engraved, the definition is to be engraved. It's it's a it's a putting it's a, cutting, yeah. a cutting and a and a standing. So yeah, I can definitely see this. So the this, second mention is Genesis thirty four five, and Jacob heard that he had defiled Dina, his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field. And Jacob held his peace until they were calm. So it's almost like you have to know when you're supposed to be speaking mm -hmm. and you have to know when you just, okay, it's not time yet. I need to sit on this. I need to let this get deep in me, engraved mm -hmm. in me, what God said, what God promised. Mm -hmm. Jake. So Jacob waited to respond until after all the sons of Israel were gathered together was mm -hmm. So, so was Jacob holding his peace until they came into unity possibility? So, yeah. And maybe that's when, when the, the children of Israel were all together mm -hmm. and they were commanded by Moses, you've got to be in unity. Yeah. You've got to hold your peace yeah. together yeah. and see the salvation of, but this is a great scripture, Zephaniah 317. The Lord that God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Yes. This is like that. He's engraved. He will rest. You know, yes. He's engraved. He's, it's, it's, yeah. it's, fat. it's like he's working. He's yeah. working deeply. Yeah. You know, Zephaniah 316 on that day, it will be said to Jerusalem, have no fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands fall limp. Adonai, your God is in your midst, a mighty savior. He will delight over you with joy. He will quiet you with his love. He will dance for joy over you with singing. I will gather those among you who grieve over your Moedim. It is a burden of shame on you. Okay, keep reading. Okay. Behold, at the time I will deal with all who oppress you. I will save the lame and gather the outcasts. I will make them a praise and a name throughout all the land where they suffered shame. And at that time, I will bring you in. At that time, I will gather you for I will give you renown and glory among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your captives before your eyes, declares that annoying. So I just like, he said, okay, he will quiet, he will quiet you. He's going to deal with your enemies. And I was like, okay, is God showing Israel? Mm. All right. I already gave you the word right let you just you just stand. okay you stand in that when it's time to go you're gonna go but it's like it's not time for another word it's time for that word to get deep in you yeah he's gonna quiet he's gonna you know mm. it's like mm -hmm. I, I have ministry friends and and they would one of them was famous for saying this is like all you need is one word from god right and why? Because it's going to quiet you. It's going to be engraved in you. It's going to be something you could live on. Right. Right. You know. Amen. Um, so he and and this is exactly what he does. Okay. So when the Reed Sea split and Israel began to cross, another separation happened between them and Egypt. Oh, very interesting. What was that separation? The angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. Also, the pillar of cloud moved from in front and stood behind them. And so came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel. There was the cloud and the darkness over here, yet it gave light by night over there. Neither one came near to the other all night long. I can't even explain mm. all this because you've got an angel, you've got the pillar of fire, you've got the pillar of cloud. It, they're, they're moving in a place to separate. Right. Israel has light. Right. Egypt has darkness. Where have we heard that before? Yeah. At the ninth plague. Yes. They're, right? It's exactly like the ninth plague. Yeah. The ninth plague, Egypt couldn't see. And now Israel can see, but they can't see Israel. Exactly. And there's also a separation. So Egypt couldn't even come near it. I just love that. It's like, they wow, come can near. we live in a place where Egypt can't come near Amen. us? Amen. Amen. When we have the fire, when we have the cloud, when yeah. we have God's angel, his protection, yes. you know, we pray. Yes. You know, we, you need to invite the angels, you know, um, to do their job. Yeah. What they want to do. So the pillar of the cloud had moved from the front to the rear. Where I, we've heard that. Isaiah what? 52, for you shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight, for the Lord go the Lord will go before you and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. Wow. Again, it's telling us yes, Egypt can't come near yes. us. Babylon can't come near us. Yes, There's a yes. separation. There's still a separation. It's not just a separation of Goshen and right, Egypt. Right. It's a separation. They leave and now these clouds 
Yeah. And this angel are separating Israel. Isaiah 58, is not this the fast I chose to release the bonds of the wickedness, to untie the cords of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to tear off every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will spring up speedily. Your righteousness will go before you, the glory of Adonai as your rear guard. In your fasting, yeah. this is, could be the day of atonement fast. It could be yeah. fasting in general. And when you not only fast, but you do what God says. Yeah. The glory is going to what? It's going to be, be your rear, rear guard. I just think it's like, wow. Yes. And maybe that's why you look in Ephesians 6, there is no rear armor. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You have because a sword, you is, have a shield, but the glory, surely goodness and mercy following, yes, right? You don't have yes. to say, okay. In Exodus 14, and um, yod heh vav says, saves Israel out of the hand of the Egyptians in that day. And Israel sees the Egyptians dead on the sea seashore. And Israel sees the great hand with which yod heh vav has worked against the Egyptians and the people fear yod heh vav and remain steadfast in yod heh vav and servant Moses. So they see the great hand of God. Yes. And we're going to see the great hand yes, of God. Yes. Because the great hand of God is greater than Amen. Pharaoh. He delivered them. You know, when they saw his hand, that he delivered them from the hand of Egypt at the crossing of the Reed Sea. That is when they had faith in God and the servant of Moses. So when he when saw they them. saw his great yes, hand. Yes, you know, yes, there's people that yes. say, oh, you know, I... I don't want to see God's hand. I just want to see God's face. You know, it sounds great, but we need both. We yes. should seek his face, but, but we, we need to have his hand. Yes. We need that great hand of deliverance. You know, it's not one or the other. It's faith. Okay. Am yes. I not? Say that. Yeah, that's so, good. It, okay. So um, the first mention of the word am I not, they believed or they had faith because Abraham is the first mention. Yeah. Abraham believed in God and or had am I not. The people believe in God. And in Moses, yeah. And the people have faith in God and Moses, his appointed vessel. The people have faith in God and Moses' Torah. So that's yeah. one way of looking at it. Yeah. They believe he's a servant. Mm -hmm. Great. He's an appointed vessel. Great. Prophet, whatever you want to call him. He, he's probably operated, operated, operated just like David, just like Yeshua, priest, prophet, and king. But Moses is a metaphor for Torah. So they're saying, I have faith in God. I also have faith in the word. Yeah. In the yeah. Torah, God's instruction that Moses is. So, um, yeah. And remember, Moses is faithful. And look at Numbers 12, 6 to 8. And he said, hear now my words, that there be a prophet among you. I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth even apparently and not in dark speeches and the similitude of the Lord shall be, shall he behold. Wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant, Moses? So God speaks about Moses. He's a servant. Yeah. Okay. And, and he's more than a prophet. Yeah. He's more than a prophet. He says prophets get dreams and, and, and visions. Um, but it's, he says, I speak to Moses mouth to mouth. Yeah. Okay. He's faith. He says he's my servant. He's faithful. He's more than a prophet. Mm -hmm. So why is it important to believe God and His divinely appointed messengers? Is that what God is saying? Yeah. Second Chronicles twenty twenty. And there arose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, "Hear me, O Judah, and your inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe His prophets. So shall you prosper." God is the one who establishes you. Yeah. But when you believe the word of the Lord that's spoken through his servants, his prophets, mm -hmm. that's when prosperity comes. Yes. That's yes. when success comes. It's not one or the other. It's both. Both. Yeah. It goes you, hand in hand. Yeah. And there's people there that say, I don't, I'm not going to get it from a man. Well, that's God's ways. So you're yeah. you're going to deny the whole Bible, New and Old Testament. God appoints messengers. Right. Godly yeah. men and women to to give his word like moses if if you don't have faith in god's messengers you can be deceived you've yeah. got look at galatians what yeah. it says but even if we or an angel from heaven should announce any good news to you other than what we have proclaimed to you let that person be cursed 
as we have said before, so I now repeat, if anyone proclaims to you good news other than what you've received, let that person be under a curse. Paul is saying we when are God's messengers, word, yeah. even if an angel yeah. or another person gives a message contrary to the, to word. the yeah. what the, the basar, the gospel. Mm -hmm. And in Deuteronomy 13, we're going to cl almost close with this, but look what this blows. This was going to blow your whole theology about, about prophets and, okay. and what's good. What it says, beware of false prophets. Whatever I command you, you must take care to do. You are not to add to it or take away from it. Suppose a prophet or a dreamer of dreams rise up among you and gives you a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder he spoke to you comes true while saying, let's follow other gods. Then you have not known that, that you have not known and let's serve them. So look at the context. The context yeah. is God says, whatever I give, tell you in the word is the priority. Word. Right. You but can't it, add or take part. Either the prophet comes yeah. <coughs> and me. tries to, he does a sign and a wonder yeah. if, or he gives you a, something that comes to pass. And then he says, Oh, by the way, I know the Torah says this, but you can also worship this God too. Do you realize that that's exactly what's going to go down in it's, the book of Revelation? It's exactly what's going to go down. Because you're going to have the Antichrist, you're going to have his prophet, and they're going to do signs, which is what that's... And the people are going to say, but they did the sign. But God says, even if the sign comes true... Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is... Okay, so it's not that the sign comes true that makes them a, a true prophet. No. It's, it's are they... Speaking to you what God said. What God said. What he commanded word. in his word. Right. We have to go back to that word. Yes. So Which every word? time you receive <laughs> any prophetic word it from a person, it needs to line up with confirm, the word of God. Confirm. confirm what the word of God yeah, says. Yes. But if it's against God's word no. plainly. Yeah. Uh-uh. Like you're married. And you're, you know, if you have a great marriage, you say, but yeah, you know, God's telling you, I've got somebody better for you or new. No, it's you don't the word. throw it out. I'm just, that's a ridiculous one, but look no, at verse we've four. Heard of yeah, it. yeah. Okay. You must not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. Now look what it says. Yeah. Because they could come with a dream that you're not to listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams for Adonai, your God is testing you to find out whether you love Adonai, your God with all your heart. And with all your soul, Adonai, your God will, God, you will follow and him, you will fear his mitzvot. You will keep to his voice. You will listen him. You will serve and to him, you will cling. So amazing. This scripture, yeah. he's saying it's a test. Mm -hmm. The sign and wonder is a test. I think Andre was bringing this kind of stuff out. Yeah. If it's against what God, his commandments, right. His decrees, his voice. You got to cling to that, even if it, and it look, the prophet's yeah. going to make it look good. Right. But it's a false prophet. Right. I think, I exactly. Think. Okay. Look at this. The prophet or dreamer of dreams must be put to death. For, free, for he has spoken falsehood against Adonai, your God, who brought you out from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery to entice you from the way Adonai, your God, commanded you to walk. So you will purge the evil from your midst. And we have to be so careful. Mm. There's a lot of people that they they're using the word prophet or prophecy right. and it's for their gain right a lot of times it's to control and they don't know the word get on the word and when they don't know the word things will come out of their nephesh their flesh right and if you're not careful you'll get caught up in the emotion the hype right and you'll walk away from the real right and go to the false. and he says he says yeah you've got to we got to get rid of that stuff so anyway i think yes. that's pretty amazing i think we're we pretty much um we mm -hmm. we covered a, a lot tonight mm -hmm. for yes um, we did do you have anything else to share before we stop the recording well i just i think it's just it, in the times that we're living we need to pay attention like you said know the word of god and know those the scripture also says know those who labor among you know the people that are praying for you that are speaking into your life you know there's a lot of things going on on the internet you know, we're on the Zoom, but there's a lot of things going on Facebook, a lot of prophets, a lot of prophecies. And look, we're coming up on the time of the year that I just don't enjoy um, the election time. There's going to be a lot of things, a lot of words. OK, but we have to stay true to the word of God. What does the word say? OK, 
And that's what we need to cling to. And everything, any word, any any um, prophetic word needs to line up with the word of God. It needs to affirm what the word of God already says. And why? Why are we telling you this? Because we understand that in the end times, like I said, in the book of Revelation, there is going to be so much witchcraft going on. And the Bible clearly states that even the very elect yes. will be deceived. Yes. Yes. It's only going to be those who know the word of God. That's what we encourage you. Study the Torah portions, read it, but read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Read, 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 read. Why? Even if you don't understand it, you're putting it in your spirit because when the false comes, and I know it's happened in my life you know, because we've been reading our words since we were 15 um, years old, reading it cover to cover. And, I, you know, I only, that when I, you know how I knew, I knew the word was when the faults would come. Mm -hmm. Because when you know the real, when the faults is put in front of you, all of a sudden you're like, that's not, wait a minute, that's not what the word says. What's that scripture? What's that? I read, I read something and the Holy Spirit will start telling you. But if you don't put the word in you, you have nothing to withdraw from. You have nothing to do a check and balance to see, is this right? Is this wrong? And even in our own nefesh, like you said, you know, a lot of times we will um, feel things or we will um, think things. Does it line up with the word of God? Even our own lives, when God, when you were saying, stand still, you know, don't be afraid and hear the word of the Lord. But you're, the word of, that the Lord gives you is going to be in one of his 66 books. He's going, it's going to come out of that. He's not going to give you some weirdo word, okay? <laughs> it's going to come out of the Bible. So that's what you have to draw from. So that's why we're, we're um, really encouraging you, you know, to read the word and, and don't, don't be deceived. When you know the tell the bank, people who walk, work in the bank say, teach them the real yeah. No, yeah. dollars. Yeah. And when you know the real dollars, when the fake ones come, yeah. they can feel it. They, they can, can feel they, it. They, they, they know they it. They know the real. You can you don't study all the false stuff. That's no, dangerous. Exactly. You, and that's why we go do what the script says. Study to show yourself approved. Workman who needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing. Yeah. The work to, you know, it, study is a, is part of your worship. Yeah. And we need to realize that. And even in this tour portion, I want to just remind you that when they came through um the Reed Sea, um, and and Moses put that put that stick into that bitter water, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, he it clearly says that, and he gives That's, them, yeah. Moses gives them, and it says that the scripture, yeah. I don't have it in front of me. It says that he gives them his Torah, yeah. okay? Or he gives them his instructions, yeah. right? So we see from the get-go how important it is that God is establishing with his children, his, his called out ones, look, I'm giving this to you. And then what does he say? When you obey them, none of these diseases yeah. will come upon you. So I, I just, I, I'm going to talk I'm excited. about Shabbat, Oh, I'm yes, so excited. About yeah, you're Shabbat. right on. And, and I hope you guys got yes. something for the show portion. I'm going to stop.